Alright, welcome to the ECED 3204 lab number 5. Um, so this one is going to be doing serial communication where your microcontroller is going to talk over a serial port which in this case will go through the, uh, the USB cable to your computer. So this is really handy if you're doing debugging and stuff like that for printing values of a statement and we're going to use this in all the rest of the labs and um, this sort of serial printf stuff you'll use your entire embedded life basically so if you haven't used this before this will be a very important lab um, you don't need anything on the breadboard in this lab in fact you don't even need the breadboard plugged in you just need this board power and the programmer board. <laughs> there is one additional thing you need to check and that's on your board um, and there's photos of this in the lab right up. There's these solder jumpers that say TXD and RXD and you need these to connect in to, um, to the USB to serial to be able to send data. So in this board I've soldered them. If not, uh, you can solder them or see the electronics workshop guys to have them close for you just takes a second all right so looking back at the code again here I've loaded uh, this example code and you're gonna work through it a little bit at a time and in particular you're gonna start writing um, writing data out to the serial port in the first part and then you'll start to slowly progress up to the point in the second part where you're using the printf and scanf statements um, as a note, so when you go to plug this in, if you open the device manager, there's a little bit of configuration you might have to do to have this to work. So I've opened the device manager. Um, when I plug in the board, so I can unplug the, just turn on the camera. So if I unplug the USB cable here, and then go to device manager, uh, what's gonna happen is there's gonna be this, this USB serial AV is going to disappear and we actually want it to appear in the comm section it may already so your computer might not need this you can check with the device manager and what should happen is up here in com port you should see something that says like com and some number com4 com8 com22 uh, if not scroll down to there's a section that just says universal serial bus controllers uh, expand that and you'll see a bunch of stuff at the bottom here or somewhere you'll see USB serial converter B so you right click and hit properties or you can probably double click on it um, under the advanced tab here we're gonna override these the device behavior to load what's called the VCP or virtual COM port so we need to do this to load the USB to serial uh, COM port so we click that hit OK um, and you'll have to unplug and replug the USB cable for that to take effect. So unplug, replug and what I'll see now is I now see a new device USB serial port and this will eventually show up as a COM port so Windows is actually going to do it you know now installing your driver thing so we'll give it a second and once this appears, what we need is we actually need to know what this COM number is. Um, so I can skip this. So in this case, I already have, I know the drivers on this computer. Um, so it now says new serial port installed COM10. Aha, so this is what we need. We need this COM10 number. So, and you can check that if I unplug the device, um, so I just unplugged it, and you can see, you'll have to expand that. Always seems to move around, there you go. You can see that COM port's gone. If I plug back in, we get that COM port again. Uh, when you, if you move your device between different USB ports, you may actually need to redo this, or just always plug it into the same uh, USB port, depending. So anyway, all you really need is you wanna make sure you get this COM 10, and you know that number. So hopefully that's drilled home enough. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to just write A, and this is just done in an infinite loop, so I have a bunch of steps here. Um, I'll build this, and I'll program the flash file into flat 4, and 
to the device. Okay, so that's done. Uh, so now what we need is a serial emulator. Uh, if you're on your own computer, what I, I actually really like a program called Termite. Um, and Termite, you can see it's just displaying this A. So I already set it up to use the COM10, which is the serial port. Um, but otherwise, so on all the, the lab computers in the school, you can use a program called PuTTY, P-U-T-T-Y, so you just search that. And how you use this is um, you need to set it to a serial connection, and we're going to say serial line, so you see I, I clicked this little box here, um, serial, and then we need to set the serial line to COM10, which was from the device manager, and we're going to need to change the speed to whatever we've configured in the lab. So the lab write-up goes through this a bit, and the speed we're using here is 115200, a common baud rate. Um, you also need to go down to this serial section to configure a few more additional things. And you need to change the, so once you're in this serial section, change the flow control from X on, X off to just none. Otherwise this could give you issues. Uh, it may not affect you, but it's better to set that to none in case you get some errors. And finally, to avoid doing this every time, uh, we can save the session. So under the save session here, we can write a name like USB serial, um, and then hit the save button. So I just hit escape by accident. Let me redo that. So you can see when I open it again, um, all this, that stuff's all gone. So that's why I might want to save it. So COM10, serial, 115, 200, turn on, turn to none, flow control, um, and then I'm going to save it as USB serial and hit save. Uh, so now when I open PuTTY again, all I have to do is double click on, you can see you now have this list, so if I double click on that, uh, it'll load all of the, uh, the settings I saved. In that case, actually, I had a typo. I put COM1, not COM10, so I'll just overwrite it and uh, make sure everything else is right, and then hit open. So PuTTY opens this window, and you can see it's just printing the AAA. Um, so that's a super simple serial example, and I'm just printing one character. <coughs> so step two, what we want, what we want is we want to actually start to read things in. So rather than read a full character in, I'm going to use this check care. I'm just going to see if we've received a character. So check if we have data ready. And if so, I'm going to print a different character to the screen. So that's the second step. So this is sort of just slowly building uh, our confidence that our system is working. So program. All right, um, and we can see if we go back, it's actually, it's now printing B because it probably thinks it's received a character. Um, so we can power cycle the device. So you can see it clears on. Oops. And then for some reason, when it's coming up, um, it most likely is seeing some garbage on the lines and that is why it thinks, ah, uh, there we go. Uh, so now we have a bunch of A's. So let me power cycle it again. So how, now we have a bunch of B's. So when I send a character to the device, so I'm just gonna hit like any key on my keyboard, we can see it changes all to A's. So we gain power cycle, we can see B's. Uh, I hit one character and it changes to A's. So what's happened <coughs> is if we look back at the code, you can see that it checks is the character ready to be read. If so, it reads a A or prints an A. If there's no character, it prints a B. Um, so this is just a really simple example that we're checking that data is being received. The final thing to do is to echo, uh, we read a character from the serial port and then we write it back out. Um, so this will just be a full echo. So let's program that in. Oops, that's not what I want. 
And if we switch back to this, we can clear the uh, clear the screen. If I type something and hit enter, what we expect is that it's going to be echoed back. So we can see if that will work for us here. Let me just make sure. Okay, here we go. It was a uh, the power was off, so it actually didn't program. Let's just redo this. Okay, there we go. So I powered it back up. So let's reopen that lab four. Program it. Oops. Um, there we go. So now, all right, now things are working. So when I type on the keyboard, um, you can see that it's being echoed back onto the screen. So whatever I type, hello there, how are you? Oops, and some characters it's dropping because I was typing too fast, possibly. Um, but we'll learn more about that when we use some of the better systems. So and you can see when I hit enter, uh, what's happening is it's just moving to the beginning of the line. And this is related to the end of line that's being sent uh, to the device is just a uh, character return and not of new line feed. So this is actually something that you might need to configure um, depending on your terminal emulator. But in this case, it doesn't matter. We we're just using that for an echo. All right, so let's move on to part two here. So in part two, um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually going to use the printf and scanf functionality to print a nicer sentence to the screen. Um, so what I want to do is I want to have this printf statement and it's going to say like system booted and it's going to tell me when I rebuilt this file, which is very useful to know that you've programmed the right file in there. Um, and then it's going to use printf and scanf to, to sh ask you some questions. Um, and how we do this is we use the same base functions that we already made and we're just going to map them into the printf, uh, scanf, the, basically the standard IO for this microcontroller. It's also worth noting that we have this this special underscore p. What this is doing is this is moving these strings into what's known as program memory, into the flash. Um, the RAM on these microcontrollers is very limited. And if you just do, so let me build it. If I just do printf um, without that fancy macro, the problem we have is that it's going to eat up um, however many characters are right here. That much SRAM is just going to be removed from the system, which isn't ideal because you only might have 500 bytes or 1,000 bytes of SRAM. And, you know, if we just lose 20 or 30 bytes every time we run this printf, uh, you could quickly run out just by trying to put some debug information. Um, so did that build okay? It did. And it's telling you, for example, that the data is, in this case, we're only using 86 bytes, so that's not too bad, um, plus some of the initialization, so a total of 92 bytes of data memory. Uh, if I use this special printf underscore p deal, let's rebuild, what we should see is that, let's look at how much, yep, yeah, now it's only 1.5% full. So you can see that we went from 92 bytes of data memory usage to 62 bytes just by using this macro, um, this underscore p. So it's very useful to normally use that. All right, so we build this, program it in, and let's look at what happens. And the other, so here's where we, we get these weird character breaks. So the other thing we need to do that I didn't set up is you can do change settings um, and you can look at similar appearance. Uh, where is it? So terminal. Uh, here we go. So here there's this option um, implicit CR. So this is saying implicit carriage return for every line feed. Um, 
if you click this, this is what we want to do because this will give us a, uh, basically everything will line up properly. Otherwise we needed to send an extra character to putty for it to move the line back to the start. So let's hit apply. Um, and let me power cycle the device. Okay, so that looks a lot better. So let's clear this. Reset terminal. Power cycle. All right, so system booted. Uh, it tells us when I built this file, in fact, so that you could go back and say, uh, you know, what time, is this the latest version? And indeed it is. Uh, what is your name? So if I put Colin, there's no echo until I hit enter. And now it says, all right, Colin, what is the number? And if I just put a number in, it asks me if I picked it. So looking back at the code, how it's actually doing this is it's converted what I asked into a number. Um, so you could use this if you, know, you want to set a gain or something like that. Uh, you can just have the user change this without having to recompile and um, you know, reprogram a whole bunch of times. So I could multiply that number by four Right, whatever. And let's do the same thing. Program in. Oops, so I, my fingers were off there, but if I put in the same number, 154, and so now it's multiplied it by four instead of uh, just echoing it back, so. So the printf and scanf is a very useful feature, and this lab will hopefully introduce you to how all of these work.